A city that's been knocked down. And a high school team that works hard on and off the field to get back up. First down! Our celebration of youth football continues with part two of a month-long series sponsored by USA Football, the sport's national governing body. Today, we learn that reaching football's finish line is great, but learning along the way might be more important. Bus ride home. You know, the usual. Pretty long. On a good day, it takes about an hour and a half. On a bad day, I could be out for three hours. But, you know, to play football is kind of worth it. I want to play in college, so. I got to do this. I love football. Get out on the field every day. I think an hour and a half of my time getting home, I think it's pretty worth it at the end of the day. For high school senior Najee Ave, it's all about the journey. Every 90-minute bus ride, every 60-minute football game, is a small step on the road to a better life. I just got Stanford's application, so I'm going to try to fill out theirs. I try to fill out one every night. Cornell is Ivy League school, so. It's pretty much the ideal place to go. UCLA, USC, Stanford. I really want to go to Stanford. Wanted to be one. It's kind of cold in Detroit, if you didn't know this. The road from now on gets harder and harder every week, and it starts with this one. Little things in football means winning and losing. Now you're going to have to give a little bit more. As simple as that. You're too good of a football team to do anything less. Welcome to Loyola High School. For 165 of Detroit's young men, it's a place of peace in the midst of an urban battleground. With some of the things that happen around in the city, things that can happen in their community, they just have the opportunity to come here and take a deep breath. This is a place where special things happen. Loyola's football team is having a special season. Despite Spartan facilities, the Bulldogs are a perfect 6-0 and, oh, and aiming for the first Catholic League prep bowl crown in school history. Hey, you almost need an octopus out there with uh, eight tentacles to uh, have a shot at slowing these guys down. Our last game, we had a, a very good turnout. People are excited, parents are involved, even students just want to come and support the team. It's just one of those years, as, as all teams experience, uh, when things peak and they, they gel and they coalesce, they come together. This isn't a team that's been winless for the past few years. This is a team that's been on the cusp of it for years and years and years. Hey, Kimani, sometimes you got to be a football player. Listen, slow down and let your wedge form. Don't outrun it. Coach John Callahan has put his stamp on this program and made it from a team that might win five, six, seven games a year to a team that's number three in the state and could contend for the state title this year. Next up for the Bulldogs is a visit to Cabrini High School. Last season, Loyola won 54 to nothing. This year, Cabrini is making Friday night its homecoming. Usually you schedule your homecoming as the suckiest team, team you know you can beat. So. When I heard that, I mean, I got offended. Like, OK, they think they're just about to blow us out. We've only beaten them once, and that was last year. But you know, when you're 6-0, and oh, you're ranked in the state, everybody's gunning for you. Success stands out in a city that's been knocked down too many times to count. We can't get no job, because everything closed down. You can't even get a job at a hamburger place. Detroit went from sugar to doo-doo. Being a man for others is not only crucial on a football field, it's a way of life for a Jesuit school such as Loyola. It's to help, help out other people, you know? Make me feel better to help others. Visitors are always impressed with our students. They say, your kids are polite, they're, you know, they address us, they hold the door open. 
Of course, part of me wants to say, well, what were you expecting? On the outside looking in, you would just think like, yeah, that's a typical all boys school in Detroit, gonna have problems. If you walk down the street that our school is on, you see bums and people who really doesn't have anything going in life. And when I see that, I don't wanna be one of those people. The Loyola Work Experience Program gives students a chance to help themselves. They get real jobs with local corporations. It helps defray the cost of tuition, and it looks pretty good on a college application. They want them to have the Catholic education, but it's like, we're not giving this to you. You have to work for it. It teaches you how to be in the workforce, too, which... A lot of good life lessons yeah. along the way. Given a student opportunity to work in a multi-million dollar company, you won't find many schools that do that. You don't find that many college students doing stuff like that. College is next in Amos Houston's journey. His job at Ford Motor Company and his place on the football team will help get him there. He's a tremendous receiver, but even more so, he's a strong safety. He's a Division I football player. Now the pass picked off. That was Amos Houston, number one. He's going to be one of the first in his family, in the males anyway, to graduate from high school. He's receiving letters now from, from all over. If my little brother see me trying to be something in life, obviously, oh, I want to be like my big brother, be like him. So, I mean, I just want to be something in life, and I want my brothers to follow that. High school isn't easy. Having a job makes it even more difficult. When football practice starts in late afternoon, Set. it makes for one long, hard-hitting day. Loyola has only half a field, shared by both the varsity and junior varsity. There's only one floodlight and one set of goalposts bordering the parking lot. For outsiders and newcomers, it's easy to see what's not there, easy to miss what is. I saw them practicing the first day, and I'm looking at the field like, that's the field? That little piece of crap? OK. They complain about this uh, 60 by 70 yard field, and I told them just practice first downs. Coaching is really a key. About a month ago, in the dead of night, we had somebody broken, stole our practice equipment. Coaches rolled with that. You know, we didn't have a sled, but they just make it work. There was about two weeks where we just had uh, the helmet uh, beanies. That, that's the, that and the football on the practice field. And we won the two games. We're proud of what we have. It may not be a lot, but it, it's ours. Two days before their showdown with Cabrini, the one thing the Bulldogs don't possess is an edge. Go! It's divine! You called arrow! I did. I did. I did. I did. Fellas, you've been successful. You've been perfect. 6-0. and oh, Because you play together. Let's make this clear right now. If we lose this football game, it's going to be because we lose to a better team, not because you aren't prepared or you aren't focused. And right now, you are not focused. We're going to run. We're going to run to get your mind back to where it's going to be. Coming up, how far will Coach John Callahan go to keep Loyola's record spotless? We got an opportunity to show how we play football in Detroit. On June 2nd, Tigers pitcher Armando Galarraga was one out from a perfect game, but a blown call took it away. To Detroit, it seemed like another symbolic body blow. To coach John Callahan, it was a teachable moment. When Galarraga pitched that perfect game, and it was a perfect game, how Coach Leland, manager, and Colorado handled it out with the class that they handled with. I mean, they could have, I mean, that guy could have gone into the history books, had everything, but it was like, well, the guy made a mistake, and, you know, that's baseball. And it was just so professional how they both handled it. Now, I, we talked to her a couple of days. I talked to the kids about it, how they handled that situation. When things don't go right and you lose something, you man up and you, you accept it and you keep moving on. 
Callahan won two prep bowls with a rival school, Notre Dame Prep. He came to Loyola to be much more than a coach. This is my secret formula for cleaning football uniforms. This is, this is the real key. It's the cascade. I coached 40 years. Thought that was about time to give it up and had coached enough. Here, there's a need. And so, and you can make a difference. So I think uh, as much as I love it over at Notre Dame, when I stepped down and this came up and it was it's a no brainer. And I, I'm lucky. I'm, I'm just blessed to be able to be here. One day before putting the Bulldogs' perfect 6-0 record on the line against Cabrini, Coach Cal remains a friend, a mentor, and a cheerleader. First down, offense! See, you're thinking way, way too much for alignment. No, just remember your alignment, and, and that's where you belong. Just don't think. And just react. How much want to bet that I can kick at 35 right now? Everything that I start on, I got a dime. That I can kick at 35 right, right now. Okay, a dime against your start positions. Hey, give me a block. Let's go. Give me a block and a ball. I had to lift. One more. Yeah. One more. Turn, turn your stuff in tomorrow. One more. A lot of coaches will say, hey, I'm, I'm here for the time that I'm here. At the end of the practice, I'm done. And, and that's really what they care about. Coach John Callahan instilled an after school mandatory study time for these guys. I look at him as a father for some reason instead of a coach because he tries to teach you more than just football. You show the kids that you care. They'll do anything for you. They'll run through a wall for you. And that's showing up on the field and in the record this year. You know where my car's parked? OK, right out in front. Open it up. There's $5. That was going towards my retirement. That's all the money I have this month, OK? <laughs> go get, uh, take the five and go get a couple loaves of bread. And then uh, we'll have the sandwiches when you're done. So hey, right back. All right. He keeps a little, couple loaves of bread in the office. Peanut butter and jelly. Guys, come in and make a sandwich. Because it's just gotten to that level of you don't know who's gonna, who's had a, a meal today, who hasn't. Hey guys, this is a big one. Okay, this is a big one. Let's go, y'all. So focus on it. Dream about it tonight. Dream about what you're gonna do. And then tomorrow do it. Okay, let's bring it up for a prayer. Let's go. You have to care, you have to be involved. Uh, there's no way you can't be one of the kids. I guess a pipe burst in the basement, and he came up the other day, and the coach, I had to miss practice, I gotta go home, because there's a foot of water in my room. I gotta go save what I can. But they fight through it, they get through it, they don't give up, and they're, they're, all, gonna, they're all gonna do something with their lives, something positive, because they, they, they dealt with enough negativeness in their life already, more so than anyone should have to deal with. Perhaps no Bulldog has had a longer journey than linebacker Tenez Hervey, the senior class president and the soul of the Loyola defense. Tenez is a natural leader. He makes a lot of noise. So it gets everybody else into the noise making mood and get on the field and fly around. Big play by double nickel. Tenez Hervey. Tenez Hervey's the leader of this team, a 5'9", 205-pound linebacker. Real sticker. I like to be called Ray Lacker because I'm a combination of Brian Erlacher, Ray Lewis. I'm better than you and you can't do nothing about it. That's the type of swag I walk out with. Tenez and his brother lived in a foster home for most of their lives. During his junior year, they were reunited with their biological mother, Ty. Tragically. Just before his senior year, she was murdered. When we heard what happened, it's like in, instead of Tenez just taking all that by himself, he had the team to lean back on. My coaches, they uh, talked to me, they rallied around me. I asked coach, can we have uh, Ty Stiggs in the back of our helmet? Ty, T-Y, that stands for my mother who passed. With no hesitation, no problem, he said, yes, I'll have him here by next week. Tenez is a special kid. 
He's a special kid. He's had his challenges, and it's made him a better person. He's a coach's dream of what a football player is. You have to kick him out of the weight room. He leaves. He does what needs to be done. He just loves to play football. I want to go to college at Michigan. But I will be playing football at the next level, farther in my education career, and hopefully everything go right. Playing in the NFL. The pros will have to wait. Tomorrow is game day. For Coach Cal, that means a long night spent finding his inner butt kiss. This is the room. This is where 2, 3, 4 in the morning, you can usually find me when I can't sleep. Beware the fury of a patient man. Of course, the wisdom of Dick Butkus can't compare to that of Mrs. Callahan. Come back victorious or come back on your shield. Most wives say good luck, honey. <laughs> Pressure school? Nah. Pressure at home? <laughs> Up next, the pressure's on. Can the Bulldogs keep their perfect season intact? We got ourselves a football game, and there's nothing wrong with that. This is the way football should be played. Any team can beat us on any given day, but, uh, but we're not going to lose. I, they're not scoring. That, like, that's what I'm predicting. It's game day. Another step in the journey towards ruining Cabrini's homecoming. Towards a prep bowl crown. Towards perfection. Why did they schedule us? You know why? Because we the easy win. We the easy win. Tanez, where you at? Sure. What city are you from? Detroit. You from Detroit? Detroit. Who else from Detroit? I'm from Detroit. Yeah. OK. Whoa! Now, they play great football in Texas. They play great football in California and Florida. But you know what? We got an opportunity to show how we play football in Detroit. Yeah. Dogs on three. One, One two, two, three, dogs. Cabrini takes an early 7 to nothing lead, but Loyola answers on a touchdown pass from Montel Cooks to Tyrone Jarrett. Let's go, 62 go. All right, look to Amos. By day, he works for four. On Friday night, number one, Amos Houston, has his motor running, helping Loyola to a 14 to seven lead. On defense, Amos is everywhere. But Cabrini begins using screens and bootlegs to counter the aggressive Bulldogs. Defense, let's get a stop out there! Let's wrap up! Let's wrap up! Just before halftime, Cabrini ties it at 14. This is the way football should be played. It's gone back and forth, get a break, make a mistake. You keep hitting, you keep playing, keep doing what you need to do. We got ourselves a football game, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's, that's, that's fine. All right, because it's going to be like this from now on. In the third quarter, Cabrini again jumps out in front, then takes a two score lead, returning Tyrone Jarrett's fumble 96 yards for a touchdown. We're going to play that way, then might as well just get on the bus and go home. Hey, what's up? The game over? Cool. The game over. Come on, man. nothing, man. Come on, man. Great football, boy. Come on, man. Game ain't over. Man. Somebody got to be able to focus and get everybody together. Calm down. The game's not over. Focus and win the game. It's simple. You got plenty of time. Plenty of time. For Loyola, this hasn't been the perfect game. But the perfect ending is still within reach. Number 55, Tenez Hervey, tightens up the Bulldogs' defense, while Tyrone Jarrett makes up for his fumble, cutting the Cabrini lead to five. We got to hold him here. Late in the fourth quarter, 
the Bulldogs have to stop Cabrini on fourth and one, or the game's over. Let's go, D. One stop, D. Perfection, defeat, it all comes down to a matter of inches. That's the first down. Play, fellas. Good job. Great job. Coaches, nice job. That's a great job. Great job. Congratulations. Congratulations, okay? I don't want to say I don't have a problem with losing. I got a problem with losing. I got a problem with losing like this. All right, but this is life, fellas. This is life. This is what it's like. Now, right here, I want you to do this. Take a look. Just take a look. And there's a reason for it. You can see how all that perfect stuff, all that stuff, if you don't take care of it, goes right out the window. If we win next week, we'll go to prep bowl. So, I mean, you're still there, but you are perfect. But you know what? Not a lot of things in life is perfect. What you really lost tonight, as far as I'm concerned, a little bit of pride. In the grand scheme of things, so what? If we can pull together, win the next two weeks, we'll have our shot. You're too good of a team not to be there. The journey isn't only about the destination. It's about how you make it and who walks by your side. Hey, put them up. Family on three. Family, family on three. One, two, three. Family. family. Next week, it's the 18th hole. Part three of our USA football series takes us to New Jersey, where a legendary coach comes out of retirement to lead a team where no player has ever won a varsity football game. It really hurts me inside because we haven't won a game yet. I just can't quit because I'm not a quitter. You know, the game of football is a game of life. The ultimate winner meets the lovable losers next week on Presents. We're going to win this football game. Ah!